As a shepherd seeketh his flock, so will the Lord seek his sheep. He that scattered Israel shall gather them. Do you actually believe that God still speaks to prophets? Well, he did in the past, so why not in our day? You've come so far. You've never even met the man. Mr. Andrews, that's Joseph Smith. You said you hadn't met him. You haven't? The gathering of Israel in the latter days has long been envisioned by prophets. October 1830. We were appointed to preach the gospel through the western states. We took leave of our friends and started on foot. We must prepare our minds and our hearts to know his servant when he comes. One night, as we were praying, an impression weighed upon us. From that moment, we knew that the word of the Lord was coming to Kirtland. It is a new day, my friend. God has spoken again from the heavens. He has called a prophet in our time. And this is the first fruit of his calling, the Book of Mormon. Come unto Christ, which is the Holy One of Israel partake of his salvation and the power of his redemption. In two or three weeks from our arrival, we had baptized 127 souls, and this number soon increased. Elizabeth Ann Whitney. Under cover of my position as a clerk in the Whitney store, I read the Book of Mormon carefully through, but was careful to say nothing. After about three months of careful investigation, I came to the conclusion that, as an honest man, I was bound to walk in the best and clearest light I saw. I first heard the gospel in Maine. I desired to gather with the saints. My mother's grief at my leaving was almost more than I could bear. Had it not been for the spirit within, I should have faltered at the last. And so I left the beloved home of my childhood to link my life with the saints of God. First time I read this book, I knew that no mere man could have written it. Joseph truly is a prophet. Brothers and sisters, we must love one another. Visit the fatherless, the widows in their afflictions, and keep ourselves unspotted from the world. Be not weary in well-doing, for we are laying the foundation of a great work. Missionaries traveled without purse or scrip. North and south, east and west. Proclaiming the gospel in every state of the Union, as well as in Canada. Organize yourselves. Prepare every needful thing and establish a house of prayer, a house of fasting, a house of faith.
It is only a little handful of priesthood you see here, but this church will fill North and South America. It will one day fill the world. Brothers and sisters, it is our duty to spread the truth and light of the everlasting gospel from the rivers to the ends of the earth. The worth of souls is great in the eyes of God. Many are kept from the truth only because they know not where to find it. April 3rd, 1836. Prophecy was fulfilled. Moses appeared and committed the keys of the gathering of Israel from the four parts of the earth. The Lord was preparing the lost sheep of Israel to hear the voice of his servants. In the school of the prophets, the brethren were prepared to accomplish the work of the gathering. The thing which will be of most worth unto you will be to declare repentance unto this people. A man filled with the love of God cannot be content in blessing his family alone. Those who have tasted of the good word of God must call upon others to partake of these blessings. The Lord has said, my sheep hear my voice. Every key, every power, and every principle of life and salvation. And now I seal them to glory and many nations to a knowledge of the truth. I left with the twelve for Fairport and went immediately on board a steamboat which the Lord in his mercy provided at the very moment we arrived. The first missionaries to arrive in Great Britain were penniless, without friends to assist them, strangers in a strange land. But that was the miracle of the work. I exhort you to read these words. The Spirit of God went before them. Within 18 months, they baptized almost 8,000. Our most important duty is to preach the gospel. Souls are as precious in the sight of God as they ever were. The gospel of Jesus Christ in its fullness has been restored to the earth. No unhallowed hand can stop the work. The truth of God will go forth boldly, nobly, and independent till it has penetrated every continent, sounded in every ear, and the purposes of God shall be accomplished. Amen.